Who's missing? Uh, Mary J. Wolfhard. You can't find her. I mean, you can check the house. You can check everything. Yeah, she's not at any local hospitals. Just for a call out here. Yeah, she's done this morning. I'm going to check the tails. She's not there. She doesn't. It breaks my heart that the last face she saw was that of Michael Olson. It was the afternoon of June 19, 2019 in Akron, Ohio, and friends and family of 68-year-old antiques dealer Mary Kay Wolfarth were growing increasingly worried. Okay, and who's missing? Uh, Mary Kay Wolfarth. How old is the missing person? She's 68, born in 50. Okay, when was the last time you saw her? Uh, one o'clock yesterday. At her place? No, I saw her at an auction, mm -hmm. and then we were we were supposed to meet again today at three o'clock. Oh. And okay. She didn't show up, and okay. so I went to her house, and her mail and her and her newspaper were mm -hmm. Her neighbor said Jen came home last night, which is like totally out of character. Okay. And she has a few cats here that I have to be. With. Okay, so she didn't show up for um to meet up with you. No. 24 hours after Mary's friends noticed she was missing, they would call the police and provide them all the details they had regarding her disappearance. What's going on? And her sister is missing for just over a month, like one hour, a couple of eight hours. And no sign of her, her car, she didn't feed her cats, her cats are everything in the whole wide world. Yep. Can't find her. I mean, you've checked the house, you've checked everything. Yeah, she's not at any local hospitals because we were called out here. Yeah, she's done this morning. I'm going to okay. check the tails. Okay. She's not there. She doesn't. As with any missing person's case, officers first must establish a routine, and Katie's was simple. Her time was spent either at home, the shop, or at her large storage unit. She plays Pokemon and meets all kinds of weird people playing Pokemon, and I don't know if that could have anything to do with it either. Either way, she's missing. We can't find her. And they handed the officer photos of Mary and any details they had regarding her disappearance. Up to this point, the officers and Mary's friends had no concrete leads regarding her disappearance. But then, a suspect came to mind. Any idea where she'd go? Here's the only thing we can piece together. Um, she had called her sister and left the message that she had a handyman that, that could do work for her and she could come to Pennsylvania stay and work for stay in her house. And that's the last best last anybody heard of. That the worker could come from Pennsylvania? No, from here, from here to Pennsylvania. Her stay in her house in Pennsylvania. So you're in Pennsylvania. Yeah. Okay. And she called her and told her that she had a worker that could come down to Swissville to stay at her house, which is something she wanted up a while and to work on her house, like a handyman thing, and then she's giggling at the end of it, which is not my aunt. Did you give you this guy's name or anything? No. Oh, no. But after local television news aired a story about Katie's disappearance, police received a fateful call from the storage facility's manager that would lead directly to her. My name is Craig Maddox. I work at... Yeah. We have rental units behind our building. And uh, there is a lady that has been missing. I don't know if a report has been filed. Okay. Her name is um, Katie Wolforth. My reason for calling is that her rental unit has been entered by another individual. We have it on surveillance tape. Okay. And to my knowledge, that individual has no permission, reason, authority to go in there. Okay. My biggest problem is, I don't know how to get it off this blasted security system. I thought you want to meet with an officer regarding yes. someone entering her unit? Yes. 
The manager told police that an unknown man was seen entering Katie's storage unit. With the case's first real lead, investigators traveled to the facility to review the footage. What they found would blow the case wide open. The footage began by showing Katie taking items in and out of her storage unit and her gray 2012 Kia Sedona parked out front. Beside her Kia Sedona, we see an orange pickup truck with the driver's side door open. Moments later, an unknown man would emerge and begin lingering nearby. Eventually, he would make his way over to Katie's unit, and the two engage in what appeared to be friendly conversation. They chat for a bit, and the man would be seen walking back to his unit after the two high five. Katie would continue to load and unload her storage unit, but if you watch closely, we see the man approach her unit, but he does so in a secretive way, almost as if he didn't want her to notice he was watching and approaching her. At the same time, Katie would be seen taking some of the items from her storage unit to a trash disposal in the distance. With her back turned, the man discreetly makes his way into her storage unit. Minutes later, Katie can be seen making her way back from the dump to her unit. Unbeknownst to her, the same man she was just high-fiving was now waiting for her in her storage unit. This was the last time Mary would be seen alive. The man emerged alone 20 minutes later with a white blanket draped eerily over his head. He then packed up Katie's belongings and moved her vehicle to an unknown location. He returned the next day with a truckload of supplies proceeded to wheel out a heavy object in two trash cans. It would be his victim's body. The unit's renter was a man named James Olson. Police contacted James, who immediately identified his son Michael as the man on the videotape. James would arrive and open his storage unit that Michael was seen wheeling the body into. Once inside, the police would discover the body and other pieces of evidence from the murder. Police begin a search for Michael Olson, only to find him already in custody for attempting to break into a restaurant. Go yeah, this way, sir. Yeah, I need to I know your face. What's up? You ever been in the county before? Yes. What if I took Well, I got a stupid TPO of my ex-girlfriend who... What's her name? What's the hubsy? That was, uh... Is this an acronym? Well, no, she lives in the falls. No, I mean, the, the, the charge, was it an acronym? Oh, it was a feral. No, oh, it wouldn't be us then. We don't control what they do. He was brought into an interrogation room for questioning, being led to believe it was only for the break-in. Yeah, 
is not sweltering hot like the back of a cruiser. Well, it wasn't too bad in there, but it was it's nicer in here for sure. Yeah. Investigators enter the room after approximately 30 minutes and immediately begin making small talk with Olson. During interrogations, it's important to develop a rapport with the subject as early as possible. The more at ease they feel, the more facts they're liable to share. Okay, we go by Mike, Michael, Mike, Mike. Mike. Okay, uh, I'm Sergeant Tony Starbaji. I don't I'm know with Acker. You uh, met Detective Brian uh, Reed. Yeah. Okay. Uh, since you're in cuffs, so I gotta read you these. All right. These are your oh, Miranda right, writes yeah. yeah. Olson has read his Miranda rights and then asked about the break-in first. If he believes he's here on minor charge alone, he's less likely to become suspicious of investigators' real motives. And then we, when we came in, we arrived and you were in the basement at that time. Yeah, I was getting up the kids and stuff out of the basement. And, I, and all of a sudden I heard, is there anybody here? And I was like, the fuck is that? And I was like, oh shit. And then I came out. <laughs> I wasn't ducking down like the one officer said. I was freaking trying to get some stuff clean for him. And why, why wouldn't they lie to me? Why, why would they say that I was trying to steal stuff? God, I've lived there for... I, I, I don't know if they actually said you were trying to steal something. Well, what am I um, doing here? But, well, because they said that you, they didn't know that you were in the house. Oh my God, did you see how intoxicated she was? They drink all day, every day. They drink a liter of Kamchaka down here every day. That's why Bob has the... the he has a blood alcohol monitor on his ankle. I thought it was house arrest at first. Olson speaks a mile a minute, attempting to explain the reasoning behind the break-in. His overexcited behavior is eventually explained by the methamphetamine binge he's been on for several days. But the focus soon shifts, and a question about his freshly shaved head sends him on yet another nervous tangent. Uh, it was like, like probably three or four days ago. I was just being goofy and just shaving around. My cousin's coming in from town. He's a Marine. I want to do something funny for him, and heck, I've never shaved my head before, really. I mean, a couple of times, but not like shaved it, shaved it. Right. It feels kind of good. I kind of like it. A little cooler in the summer, right? Yeah, exactly. That's, I mean, and literally, I think, so I went to a, I played where I was baseball with a buddy of mine uh, back, I think I played from when I was 27 until about 30. Anyway, with Thurman Munson Stadium, I didn't have gel and I didn't have my hat. So I was going like this, it was in my face, I was like, fuck it, I'm getting rid of it. Olsen is briefly left alone to complain about the uncomfortable handcuffs. I can't fucking believe it. They said that they, said that they didn't know I was in the house. What a crock of shit. Unfucking believable. Oh man, come on. <laughs> Please take these shit off. I don't believe you. When new investigators arrive to question Olsen, he suddenly seems to realize this is about much more than a simple break-in. This is uh, Sergeant Dan, Dan Marks. Hey, oh, how you doing, bud? All this over is suspected to be in the end. This is retarded. You're trying to find a different Michael, oh, that, right? that one's a lot better. Michael, right? Yeah. All right. Hey, Michael, how are you doing, man? All right. So, I read you your, your Miranda rights. You, you understand those? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, keeping those rights in mind, we'd like to talk to you uh, about another issue. Um, so, today, uh, you talked to, you told uh, Detective Brayden that uh, you were mulching uh, out there at the Coventry? Yes. Yeah, yeah. We went up to Atkins find a small store at the mulch farm. Who was that at? Copper Road. Oops. Okay. Um, did you, uh, well, we, know, we met your dad today, and uh, he was saying that. Uh, you met my dad? Yeah. Yeah, did you talk to your dad on the phone today at all? Uh, yeah, a couple of times. Yeah. And uh, what did you, you, talk about? you ran did you run out of gas? Yeah, I ran out of gas. I've been running out of gas a lot lately. Been a little bit broke. <laughs> yeah, so. Okay. Yeah. Uh, like he asked, what would you guys talk about you and your dad? Uh, like he said, he called me up earlier to go get a. I had to bring over the past little finish gun, and uh, and that was about it. So. Did he say that uh, we wanted to talk to you? We. The Akron Place. No, not at all. Text you, called you on the phone. I mean, I got a couple calls, but I, mean, I didn't. 
that was after I went on a job with Tool Off. I didn't talk to him. I was busy doing the mulching down there. Come, that's where he lived. So it was kind of a Father's Day present for him a little bit. So. Olson is surprised to hear that investigators have been in touch with his father, James. It's James who gave them access to the storage unit containing Katie's body, as well as texts he sent to his son, urging him to turn himself in. Uh, no, no, no. I had golf league tonight. That's what I was actually getting ready to go do. You weren't supposed to meet your dad? No. Up at the storage unit? No. Up until this moment, Olson literally had no idea the police had any awareness of what happened at the storage unit. We can only imagine what was going through his mind at this moment. What you're about to see is his best attempt at playing dumb and acting as if he has no idea what the detectives are insinuating at. Was That's what he told us. Oh, no, no. That's why he was calling you? No. Did he, uh, did he meet up with you uh, after you ran out of gas? Yeah, he came and actually got me some gas, yeah. But, uh, I mean, I didn't, he didn't say anything about it. <laughs> he got you gas? Uh, well, actually, he just gave me ten bucks, and then uh, there was—I was right by that. I was on Carroll and Exchange, uh, Carroll and Market, you know, to get some gas, and uh, he just, then he left. So. Your dad did? Yeah, yeah, he left me there. What time was this? Shit, that'd be—I don't know. I, I really don't know. Eleven, maybe twelve, one somewhere around there. I don't know. Sure, it wasn't more like uh, one or two. One or two. Well, like I said, eleven, twelve, one. Two, yeah, I don't know. Concept of time really it's had so much going on lately. Okay, what well, we had going on lately? Just working with my mom, uh, my mom and stepdad on a couple of yogurt shops, trying to work for dad, trying to make any ends meet because me and dad haven't been fighting very much lately. <laughs> we butt heads, you know, we've worked together, lived together for a while. It's, it's not very good. Um, so, your, your storage unit up there uh, up on North Hill. Yeah. Um, well, it's, not, it's your dad. It's my dad's, yeah, it ain't mine. Who has access to it? Uh, me and my dad. Yeah, okay. and then there's a... Uh, anyone else? Uh, no, but I mean, you know, I don't know if you know about theft that was up there not that long ago. Uh, this guy used to get into all the units, stole all types of shit. So we're Tim Bolser, I don't know if you know that name. But, uh, um, yeah, but me and my dad are the only ones that had the keys for it. But uh, yeah, so that's... Okay, yeah. when was the last time you were there? Uh, I was up there... Either yes, this morning or yesterday morning. While Olson admits to recently having been at the storage unit, he strangely can't seem to remember if it was yesterday or this morning. Were you getting something out? Or were you no, I was, uh, was getting ready. Um, the lady lives next door in the brick house. She gave me, uh, she, helped, she had me help her move out this big stereo thing. I was going to spray paint it and sell it on, uh, what do you call it, Facebook sell or whatever. And so. Now, are you aware that uh, the, that storage area, they've got all kinds of cameras? Oh, yeah, yeah, because of the thefts. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, your dad said sometimes you sleep in there? Uh, only th the only reason I slept in there is because I'm so tired from doing that, Like, if this represents the floor of the unit, you couldn't even walk in it as of uh, a couple weeks ago. So I was cleaning it out for him, trying to get it functional again. But yeah, I crashed up there one night just because I fell asleep and I was like, it doesn't take a seasoned detective to spot that Olsen is lying and his nervous, fidgety body language is telling investigators everything they need to know. Considering he's already admitted to knowing there's security cameras at the storage units, it's fair to say his heart is assuredly racing. Well, like I said, well, like I said we, uh, we, were, we were up there, we talked to your dad, and you said that you were on the way. You ran out of gas. The truck was down there at Carroll and Book, or East Market. Yeah, Coast. right. And I was going to get a, I was going to get a lift up to the gas station to get some gas, but I never said I was going over to the storage unit. Yeah, he said, that's what he said. He that's what he said? And he actually texted you. Well, I, my, I haven't seen my phone in a while, so I've obviously been dealing with this, so. Well, this has been like three or four hours now. Well, yeah, but still, it just feels like it's been an eternity that I've been going through a window to help out a neighbor. And, well, so when, when so was the last time you were up at the storage unit? Well, like I said, uh, yesterday, this morning, yesterday morning, I can't remember what day it was. Were you out there Monday? What's today? Today is Wednesday. Uh, Monday. Two days ago. I've been up there sporadically throughout the last week. I don't know exactly which day, but uh, what's today? Wednesday? I felt, no, I don't think I was up there Monday. No, it wasn't. Okay. Uh, Were you with anybody when you were up there? No. No, I mean, I just pretty much rolled this up right solo. I mean, Dick, come, you know, Richard Leslie, the guy that owns the place, comes back every once in a while to hang out. Yeah. Talk. Yeah, Dick. <laughs> Do you, uh, do you ever see anybody else that has storage units up there or talk to anybody? Oh, well, there's a couple old, uh, old timer to my right, 
I think his dad is a, uh, I think his dad, or his son is Black Keys, uh, you know, the, the, the group, yeah. And then uh, sometimes I see the people across from us, they're hoarders, they got all types of, oh my gosh, it's to the brink, I thought our shop was bad. Mm -hmm. And then Jake Leslie and I, you know. The surgeon will now show Olson the photo of Katie given to them by her friends and family. Something like that, five days, I, I literally, my days have been running together so much as I've been freaking going crazy. Is she looking like? Oh uh, yeah, that's um, yeah, that's Dave and Kat Kathleen, Kathleen, Katie, Katie. That's the same name, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Who is she? Uh, she has a she has a storage unit up there. I think with her, I thought it was her husband Dave or something okay. like that. I met him before. Which one was she in? That? Uh, I, well, I don't know which what the letter is. I have no idea. It's, Next to you, across from you? Oh, uh, across from me, I'm the, in the middle building. Okay. Yeah. When was the last time you saw her? Uh, I'd say probably Saturday, Sunday, something like that. I was up there doing some stuff around the shop. Okay. Uh, it's interesting to note Olsen's overreaction to the idea of him dating Katie. Considering the brutal nature of the assault, his mock disgust seems to be a preemptive attempt to convince police of his innocence. No, I'm not dating this woman. <laughs> well, Mike, their video shows that you were talking to her Monday. So, well, yeah, okay, I told you my days were all together, like. And both of your storage units were open, you guys, you were going in and out yeah. of both units. Were you, I thought that was, were that was you in her unit? Was I, was I in her unit? Uh, no, it was right outside the door. I mean, I might have ventured in there to look at a couple stuff when she was right there, so yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, have you ever been in her unit? Not like, not before that, no. Okay, but you, Monday, you did not go in the unit? Oh, or just a Tony, I mean, I really don't know. I was standing there, I was talking, she cleaned out my, uh, uh, what do you call it, shop back, and I just, I just am bad on the timeline of the dates. I really don't know, so. Okay. Uh, but I never was actually like, I mean, maybe right inside the door, but all the way in the back. No, I've never been in there. You can't even, there's a freaking wall of stuff you can't get through there. I guess she hasn't been in your, your unit? Uh, just, uh, she brought me, she dusted off the shop back, and, you know, I, I wanted her to see, because everyone that drove by I saw how disgusting it was. I was like, hey, look, look. A lot better. I'm actually doing a lot better, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, would her DNA uh, be in your storage unit? No, not at all. Not at all? No. Why would her DNA? Well, yeah. the reason I think we're asking about her is because the family made a report. They haven't seen her in a couple of days. What the so we're trying to trying DNA. to find her. DNA? Why? No, she was. If anything, she stepped right inside my unit and gave me the. And she blew off the, the filter for my shop back that I was using. This is ridiculous. Okay, so on Monday. Her sister got a phone call, or actually a message left on her machine, mm -hmm. saying Katie was telling her she has this handyman named Jim Olson. Oh yeah, yeah her sister in Pennsylvania. Michael, yeah. yeah, I was gonna do a little road to work trip for her, but yeah. Okay, remember having that conversation? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Monday? Oh, I don't know if it was, I mean, like I said, it could have been Monday, what, just Wednesday? <laughs> Sometimes I'll go like, I'll say, hey, uh, yeah, wait, uh, wait, about seven minutes or so, and that was like, it was like seven minutes ago, but it was like a week ago, or that's, uh, my timeline gets fucked up every once in a while, and people are like, dude, that's, you're an idiot. Olson continues to talk in circles, denying what investigators already have clear proof of, and when he's asked about his drug use, the pattern of dishonesty continues. In real time, we are watching a murderer realize his kill was caught on camera, and the cops have him dead to rights. He is stumbling over his words and can't string together a sentence without pausing. Sorry. Let me ask you something that's totally unrelated and it doesn't matter. You, uh, you, you hooked on anything? What, what got you using? I hooked up. I smoke weed every once in a while, but it gives me, it gives me a little bit of upper energy. And then nothing else? Nothing else. Right. Um. So you, so you saw her Monday. Or set or sometime in the last couple of days. Yeah, last couple of days, yeah. Yeah. Because she she's been missing for a couple of days, so we've been trying to find her. Uh, do you have any idea where she might be? Did she talk about where she was going? No idea. She did not say where she was going. No. No. Okay. Again, there's video and one and it was this was Monday. It shows you moving her van. No. Yeah. 
No, I wasn't doing it. Yeah, I mean, video doesn't lie. Can you explain that? No, I can't. Should you move in the video? Move, I mean, move, move in the video. Move in the van. Yeah, I guess. Investigators have given Olson every opportunity to confess, yet despite being caught dead to rights, he still refuses to do so, instead claiming he's the victim of the setup. Listen, Monday, whatever day it was, that was Tuesday or Sunday, I, there's nothing to explain. We no. Just, no. We love the fifth one. No. Well, we found blood in your human. No. Still here. A lot of blood. And here. Do you want to explain that? I mean, I cut myself on some glass and... What about hair? With what? Like, how long have you been keeping your hair like that? Uh, so literally like two, three days. Okay. Literally like two, three days. Well, you said, uh, I think you said it was about three or four days ago, earlier. Well, three, four days, two, three days. I, like I said, I don't know how my timeline is, man. It sucks. We found lots of blood in your storage unit. Lots of blood. We found sticks, instruments, with a lot of blood. No fucking way. Like Sergeant Mark said. Yeah, someone's got a frame or something. No, you just said that the only two people that get, have access to your unit. But somebody, like if you ever look up in the saw pit, that fucking Tim, he's trying, I bet he's trying. As Olson is now confronted with the insurmountable evidence of his guilt, his facade finally crumbles. We have video of you talking to Katie. Well, yeah, I've talked to Katie before. Talking to her on Monday, driving her van away. Her keys, so her keys were found in your dad's basement today. You know, he's shitting me. No. How did Tim get out there and, and plant that? Tim fucking, he's uh, fucking, no, no, no. no. That's, that's not the narrative you want to try to deal with. That's, that's not going to work for you, buddy. Something bad happened to Katie. You know it. You know what happened. So like Sergeant Mark has given you the opportunity to give us your narrative. Yeah. Jesus. So stupid. This fucking life. What happened? She wouldn't give you some money. She wouldn't give you a job. What? Olsen offers a predictably insane reason for murdering Katie. He claims to have been a victim of an ex-girlfriend's abuse and simply snapped after Katie mentioned her name. We have uh, yeah. the sticks. The yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell us what happened, Michael. I mean, it's probably going to help you. I mean, you, you can't you can't feel good holding this in. No, no, no. no I just. Tell us what happened. I snapped, man. I snapped. I just about something, what? something came over me. I don't know. What, what made you? My ex girlfriend, dude. She it was a downfall. It's not a, like it's not. She doesn't want to hold a gun to me. There, my ex girlfriend, but she made me a different person because of her toxic, narcissistic race. I was mentally, verbally, emotionally abused. I don't know. Just I snapped, and Katie said something about my fucking ex girlfriend. I don't know. Mm-hmm. You know what? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell us what happened. Investigators can now piece together what happened, but for the purposes of a full confession, they must hear it in the killer's own words. I mean, I think you know what happened. I think you just give me one to say it. Yeah, that, that's why I told you. This is your narrative. This is your chance to say for your story. Yeah, well, I just. Are you just a cold blooded no, homicidal maniac? Not, not at all. Or was it the heat of the moment? Heat of the moment, I can think. I snapped. So take us through it, man. Nah, uh, I was just went over there, hit her on the head. That was it. What'd you hit her on the head? Nice, yeah, something I can't remember. So like a metal pipe, a walking stick, something in there. Wooden. Nah, yeah, it was actually a uh, uh, piece of. I don't need to see that yet. Yeah. A piece of the fireplace stick. Looking one of those broken. I don't know, I just, I just saw it, I grabbed it, and I just like, fucking snapped it. Did you do it in her, her unit, or? Yeah. Like, yeah. And then I just, I don't know, I just I tried to get rid of the evidence, but it was just stupid idea to do it, because I knew about those fucking cameras. Was... Where's the van? No <sighs> idea. Yeah. I parked it in the hood somewhere. How'd the keys end up down at your dad's? 
I took the key off there and I was going to get rid of those. I was going to wipe them off. It was dumb. I shouldn't have never done it. Obviously, I'm going to jail for the rest of my life, but it's, it's snapped, man. I've been so emotionally and verbally abused. Uh, you have no idea. I got a mother that fucking, you know, staying with from 35 years old. So there's my narrative, a little bit. Can you explain got After his confession, Olsen noticeably relaxes. The register of his voice lowers and his nervous movements slow to a stop. I'm not making a lot of this stuff up. I mean, no, it's no, just, no. yeah, it's just, really I'm, I'm it. having a hard time, like, you know. So then when you went back to the van and moved it to the hood? Yeah, yeah, because I was trying to get, so I mean, I mean obviously, somebody you can look for it. Right next to the office, it'd be pretty easy. Pretty close. Yeah. Uh, what about her uh, cell phone? Um, it was, I think, in the car. Or, or was that? Did you trade it for something? No, no, I did not trade it. I don't pawn stuff like that. I earned my money. Okay. No, her cell phone was an Android anyway. with more shit. <laughs> and plus, I've never been to a pawn shop really in my life, maybe one time down in West Virginia. And that was when I was like 22 or 23, so that's the reason. So, where do we go from here? Well, I mean, you know you're gonna get arrested. You get a ring, you get a bond, you get an attorney. Yeah, I actually could use a judge of Mark Bowie was my attorney for the TPO thing, maybe I'll represent him. Well, the only certain attorneys can represent oh, yeah, in cases that I'm not sure. So, I mean, in the long run, you just sit there and say, hey, I mean, I, I came off the bullshit story, and you can look at the judge and ask for some, you can ask the family person for doing this, and the, the really. judge, they give you a little bit of mercy, and... Yeah, I just, I mean, I'll spend the rest of my life in prison, I don't want to die, because I can't do good works. I have been a good person my whole life, I just, I snapped, because people have been riding my ass. Well, you were, you were talking to her, what'd she say that reminded you of your girlfriend? She we were kind of talking about her a little bit, and she said that maybe, maybe you did this to her, or whatever. So she was blaming you. Mm -hmm. yeah, I never did a fucking thing to that ex-girlfriend of mine. I treated her like a fucking queen. So you said you just saw something laying there. Mm -hmm. right. well, is there anything else you can think of um, that you want to know? I mean, yeah, I'm sorry. If you have any other questions, I mean, you can ask me, but not that I can think of. I think we're. Pretty much, you got your confession. I got a confession, didn't you? Well, like, like I told you, I, mean, I think we knew enough. It's just up to you for your narrative. Well, I just, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I should have never done it. I just, for some reason, I snapped. And uh, well, like he said, it was you getting it off your chest. Does it make you look like a cold-blooded killer? I'm not, a cold, I'm, I'm not. I mean, this is one stupid thing that I'll never be able to live down, but... Okay. All right, well, I'm like, is that my hand my pants? I'll shake your hand. No, yeah, 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 I mean... I don't think you want that, so. No, I'm not shaking your pants. All right, before we get into the town, we'll try to get you some hand. Yeah, I will. All right. That. Thank you. Michael Olson pulled guilty to multiple felony charges, including aggravated murder, rape, gross abuse of a corpse, grand theft of a motor vehicle, and trespass in habitation. You understand that if you plead guilty here today, you're admitting the allegations. You understand that? At the sentencing, Katie's friends and family spoke of her infectious kindness and compassion toward all people and animals, and had a harsh words for her killer. You are a selfish, disgusting, hate-filled scourge. The world is a much safer and better place without your evil upon it. Was she afraid? Did she beg for her life? Did she suffer long? And mostly, why? It breaks my heart that the last face she saw was that of Michael Olson, the vicious person who and murdered her. For Olson's part, he provided the court a likely excuse for his chilling crimes. Albeit. Drugs did have a big factor in this. I mean, I chose to do those drugs. So I'm not blaming anybody but myself. On the conviction of aggravated murder, you will be sentenced to a life sentence without the possibility of...